the Pittsburgh Pirates are in a familiar spot offensively. So I have a message for Andy Haynes. And with the loss last night, the Pirates dropped to fourth in the NL Central. And I have one thought about how the Pittsburgh Pirates can still salvage this season when all feels lost right now amidst an eight-game losing streak. My name is Ethan Smith of the Locked On Pirates podcast brought to you by Game Time. Let's do this. You are Locked On Pirates, your daily Pittsburgh Pirates podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome back to the Locked On Pirates podcast here on the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team, your Pittsburgh Pirates, every day, if you even want to call them a team right now with the way they're playing. My name is Ethan Smith, Pittsburgh Pirates superfan, trying to bring positivity to the Pittsburgh Pirates in a world where positivity really can't exist with this team right now. And today is going to be a little different. I usually have some positives that come out of these games and the stretches where I can look at certain things and say, okay, this team can use this to move forward. They can do this to move forward. They can improve on this and make their right there. They can make hay and do what they need to do. That doesn't feel like the case right now. This team is in the middle of an eight-game losing streak, and a lot of it, nearly to me all of it, goes on this offense if you will, if you're not on YouTube, I just use quotations in that. And also if you read my recap on inside the Bucks basement last night, you would also get that from me that I was putting the word offense in quotations because this isn't an offense. It's it, it plain and simple is not a major league baseball offense. It's just not. Now, am I going to blame that, blame that on the players? No, because we saw a very similar team, if not better now, that you have a better player in Henry Davis inserted into the lineup, albeit I know Brian Reynolds is dealing with a minor injury. Andrew McCutcheon is dealing with a minor injury and has had five off days in the last 10 days. Those are two big parts of your lineup that aren't there. But if we go back to April and even parts of May, Tucapita Marcano was a big part of this offense. G1 Bay was a big part of this offense. Josh Palacios has swung a good bat since he came up. Carlos Santana has made strides. Jack Sawinski sometimes looks like an all-star and sometimes looks like the worst hitter in baseball. But a lot of those guys that I just mentioned were in the lineup yesterday and have been in the lineup consistently for a while. Rodolfo Castro is great against lefties. He's made his impacts this year. Connor Joe has swung a pretty good bat as a lady. He had two hits last night. So I have a message for Mr. Andy Haynes of the Pittsburgh Pirates. We all know who Andy Haynes is. That's why when I was making the title for the show and also the rundown, I was going to put hitting coach Andy Haynes, but I'm pretty sure A lot of Pirates fans know who Andy Haynes is at this point. And I have a bunch of notes here. You'll just, I'll even show you. These are my notes that I do for every show. I have notes for every show that have a lot of the things that I want to say. And I'm going to use them. And first, the first thing that I wrote before I wrote anything else about Andy Haynes and this offense and the statistics that I'm going to throw at you and why this team might not be able to come back from this, is what the hell, man? Seriously. Like, like what the hell? Ever since I started this show in October of 2020, a week before my birthday, the Pirates were coming off of a 19-41 and COVID truncated season. They had one of the worst offenses in the entire league that year. Then 2021 comes along. Key Brian Hayes hits a home run on opening day against the Chicago Cubs, breaks his wrist the next day. The offense looked like shit. It really did. 
And yeah, there's some language in this episode that I'm not going to be proud of. Because I just slipped up there. But 2022 comes around. Hayes has a half year under his belt. They get the infusion of O'Neill Cruz and Bly Madris even. The offense still was awful for a good part of that year. Then we come to 2023, and in April it looked like, okay, they're turning a corner offensively. Maybe Andy Haynes has changed his stupid philosophy of having guys watch his uh, pitches just whiz right by them that are right down the middle. And the offense was on fire for a good portion of April. And even parts of May, if you remember that streak where they were winning games by double-digit runs in the first game of a series and then couldn't do anything. It's because this offense is inconsistent as hell. It is. And it's just terrible to watch. If you watch the game last night, the Pirates were shut out in their third game in the past four games and have scored two runs in their past 38 combined innings. Throw some of that on the players if you want. Do it. I mean, it's fine. The players have to play too. I understand that. You can blame some of the discipline on the players. You can blame vision, all that stuff. Like, all you can go all into that if you want. But who's the person that is constantly in their ear telling them to watch pitch after pitch after pitch and go up to the plate and hope for walks? It's Andy Haynes. And it's, and it, I don't know what else. The front office, the players, or Andy Haynes himself need to see, to see that this idea of waiting on your pitch and getting into 0-2 counts or 1-2 counts or forcing the occasional walk is working because it's not, <laughs> it's, it's not working at all. And, I, and you don't need me to tell you that. Nobody needs you to tell you that. Just watch the games. They play at 12.35 today. This episode's going to come out like right before that. And I guarantee you, you could probably, and this is just how I feel today. There's no McCutcheon and no Reynolds in the lineup again. You could probably re-watch this first segment about me complaining about the offense. And it's probably just going to be an evergreen segment at this point. I could drop this segment in the show tomorrow. And it would make sense. So right now, if we remember, the Pirates were on a historically good offensive pace in April that I told everybody was not going to be sustainable, but I didn't think it would get like this. Pirates ranked 19th in batting average, 28th in at-bats per game, which is something that not a lot of people look at, but I do. Because that means if you're only getting 32, and a, 32 round up to 33 at-bats a game, it's not good. 22nd in runs per game. 22nd in slugging. 23rd in home runs per game. 27th in total plate appearances. Those are big metrics for an offense to be ranking 19th or lower in all of those metrics is unacceptable. It, 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 it's unacceptable to be ranked that low this deep in the season with the offense that you were fielding in April. This team was a wagon. They were 20 and eight. Their pitchers couldn't be stopped. And may I add Osvaldo Beto and Johan Oviedo just had back to back quality starts in this series. And they lost by a combined 12 runs. The pitching staff feels like it can't make a mistake. Folks, and it sucks because these pitchers right now go out there and pitch their tails off, and it doesn't matter because this offense is doing nothing. And Andy Haynes, I'm not done with my message to you, but I do have to talk about game time in between that. I will be using game time, by the way, this upcoming Monday to go see Monday Night Raw in Savannah, Georgia. And if you want to go to Pittsburgh Pirates games this summer or down the home stretch, make sure you use game time and download the game time app today. 
and use code locked on MLB for $20 off because buying tickets to your favorite events shouldn't be stressful. Game time is a fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater near you. And they have killer deals on last minute tickets with their best price guarantee. So you can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting hyped for the fun you'll have. Get images of your seat before you buy so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. Buy tickets in a matter of seconds, two taps, and you're set. Tickets are sent directly to your phone so you never have to dig through your email. So download the Game Time app, create an account, use code locked on MLB for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code locked on MLB for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. So you heard those statistics that I said about the offense. Those are overall. So that is including May 30th or 31st or whenever this season started to this current date. How about we look at June 1st to today, June 21st. Tomorrow, by the way, we'll be looking at the Miami Marlins series. So be ready for that. We'll also be talking a little bit about whatever you want to call this nine game stretch against the NL central tomorrow. So that'll be fun. But back to Andy Haynes, June 1st through June 20th, they have not played yet today. So obviously there's no stats to add to today's game until that game is done. As a team, the Pittsburgh pirates are slashing folks. As a team, may I add, 233, 316, 361, and 677. I will repeat those numbers individually. As a team, they are batting 233 on average. They are only getting on base at a 316 clip. They are only slugging. 361 as a team and have a OPS below 700 as a team with a 677 OPS. So let that render for a second, folks. Seriously. That is something that you look at and hear me say, and that is just disgraceful. Let's add some more stuff. Only nine extra base hits in the last six games for the Pittsburgh Pirates. They have no more than one home run as a team in their last seven games. A couple of those games, no home runs, which is common. It happens. But to not have more than one home run in a game in your last seven When you have Jack Sawinski, Brian Reynolds, Carlos Santana, guys that can put the ball over the fence in the lineup, and that's all you do? You heard me mention earlier that they've only had two runs in their last 38 combined innings. How about I one-up it for you, Andy Haynes? Eight combined runs in your past six games. Like, this hurts for me to, like, sit here and have this show just be completely negative. It really does. I, I don't want to sit here and just be negative about this, but I can't be positive about it either. As a team, the Pittsburgh Pirates have had seven strikeouts or more in their past 10 games. Seven strikeouts or more, folks. That's all the offense that I really, or all the offensive statistics that I really have to throw at you about Andy Haynes. But as I said before, since 2020, since I joined this podcast network, there's been one common theme about this team their offense sucks. And I don't think Andy Haynes can legitimately coach a. Major League Baseball offense. I've seen enough. I I don't think he can genuinely coach a Major League Baseball offense. 
I, I, I just don't. And I don't know what to do here. Um, the All-Star break is not far away. And I think that needs to be the spot where the Pirates say, if this offense has not improved considerably before the All-Star break, with a game today against Chicago, a series against Miami, a series against uh, San Diego, another series against Milwaukee, and then a couple or good amount of games against the Dodgers in Arizona. If they don't improve considerably, Andy Haynes needs to see the door and be thrown in the Allegheny River. Plain and simple. This is all too familiar to Pirates fans at this point to see this offense be this bad. And it shouldn't be. Because in April, we got to see what this offense could truly be. They were attacking early pitches. They were getting on base any way they could find a way to get on base. They were taking their walks in good spots to take walks because they weren't chasing stuff outside of the zone. Now, they're going up there and hoping for walks because that's what their hitting coach is telling them to do. So here's my last thing on Andy Haynes. Fix it or get out. Seriously. Fix it or get out. Plain and simple. As mentioned before, Johan Oviedo and Osvaldo Beto had back-to-back quality starts to kick off this series against the Chicago Cubs, and one would hope one of those would have created a rubber match for us today, but the, Ch- the Cubs have a chance to sweep again, and the Pirates have a legitimate chance to go 0-9 over this nine-game stretch that, if you remember, Ethan Smith called the biggest stretch of the season so far. And not only have they failed at a prime opportunity, probably the best chance you'll get all year, to really solidify yourself in the NL Central, they imploded. Now, I did say on Twitter about something about an implosion. Do I think this team is going to fully implode? No. The pitching's too good. The offense has to come around at some point. If Osvaldo Beto and Johan Oviedo are going to give you a quality start once every three starts, you're going to be fine. Mitch Keller is going to do Mitch Keller things. You know what you're getting from Rich Hill. Luis Ortiz is only getting better with every start. The bullpen is having its issues. Dowry Moretta has seen an extended role, gave up his first home run in nearly two months last night. But the bullpen even is not terrible. But now, amidst all this, the Pirates are now behind Cincinnati, who is one of two teams now to have a double-digit win streak this year, the only other one being the Tampa Bay Rays. The Milwaukee Brewers, who they lost three games to in the stretch, and now the Cubs, who they've lost five games to in this stretch and are in danger of losing six today against Drew Smiley. The only team that the Pirates are ahead of now in the dismal NL Central is the St. Louis Cardinals, and they only have a four-game advantage on them. All it takes is for the Pirates to get swept in a series and the uh, Cardinals win a series. The entire NL Central is in it at that point. You could argue that the entire NL Central is still in it. And another reason why I thought that this stretch of games against the NL Central was such a big deal was because they play the Brewers again to end the month. They play the Brewers on June 30th heading into July. So that's not this upcoming weekend, but next weekend. But after that, they won't play the Brewers or the NL Central again until August 3rd through the 6th. So they only get two games in the month of July against the NL Central, which are big games, obviously, for this team if they want to be in this fight. Now, it is interesting to me at the placing of a lot of their games that are left against the NL Central, most of them being in August and September, which will be the home stretch. Are the Pirates still in it? At that point, who knows? (laughs) Honestly, who really knows at this point with the way this team is played? 
but you still have 30 games left against NL Central opponents. 30. It's a pretty considerable amount of baseball games. And when you look at where they sit in the standings, yes, they are four games below 500. The Cincinnati Reds are on a burner right now. The Brewers are right there with them. The Cubs have overtaken you. You're still only four games back. Still only four games back after a one in nine stretch over your last 10. You are the only team in the division that is on a losing streak. And you're still only four games back. What does that mean for the Pittsburgh Pirates? So let's just say that the rest of their games against the, uh, the rest of their games, like no other game matters. Just count these 30 games. Obviously, against the Cubs and Brewers, they have really played bad. But against Cincinnati and St. Louis, they played good baseball. So, 30 games, and you just have to finish four games over 500 in those 30 games. 19 and 11 is all you'd have to do. Sorry, I just realized I had something in my uh, teeth. Thank you guys for uh, noticing that for me. But 34 and 38 is where you currently sit. And, yeah, it, it, it really does look bad right now. And I can't blame any of you for thinking otherwise. But you still have 30 games against the NL Central. You still have the entire the rest of this month. You can do a lot of good things the rest of this month, or try to, at least. You then have all of July. They'll get a much-needed All-Star break with the injuries that they're dealing with. At some point, <laughs> you're going to get G-Man Choi back. He's going to be a very big help for this offense, I think. At some point, you're going to get O'Neal Cruz back, and we already know what he can do for this offense. At some point. You're going to probably get Andy Rodriguez on this team. And you're going to get some pitching reinforcements, I think, at some point, too. I still believe that we have not seen the best version of this Pirates team this year. Will it be too late by the time that some of these guys get called up? That's a possibility. Because where do you play them? Andy Rodriguez, it makes sense. You'd want him to play catcher with whatever the Pirates are trying to do behind the plate right now. And it's fine to think that way. But it's not as easy as you think. Because then I hear some people talk about Nick Gonzalez. Where does he play with Marcano, G1 Bay, Mark Mathias, who's not here anymore, Rodolfo Castro, and then the eventual return of O'Neill Cruz. Where does Nick Gonzalez play? I know a lot of you want to see Quinn Priester. I just don't think he's ready yet. I agreed with Gary on Monday when I think Jared Jones could legitimately surpass him to the majors because of how good he's been. The Pirates are, I don't want to say a bad team because they're, uh, we've seen them be good. We've seen this team do the best things that they can do with what's been given to them. But they are wildly inconsistent. Employing a guy who has ruined this offense for the past three years. And ultimately, they're getting in their own way more than anything. I think that's the biggest issue here. I don't really think it's been other teams beating the Pittsburgh Pirates. I wouldn't go out and say the Brewers or the Cubs went out of their way to do anything spectacular to beat this team. The Pirates are just not playing well, folks. And that's fine. Let's say they win today against Chicago. Great. You leapfrog Chicago right back in the standings. Then you head to Miami. You know what? Who knows what happens in Miami? Who knows what happens when you go to San Diego? And then come back home to play the Brewers to face teams that are not in your division. 
for the first time in a week and a half. Maybe that's what they need. But at the end of the day, here's my one thought on this Pirates team. Good or bad, you can't deny it's fun. Because when the highs are highs, they are awesome. We have seen them sweeping the Cardinals, starting 20-8, and eight, being the best team in the National League, leading the NL Central for a good portion of this season. The bads are not so fun, but the Pirates at least have shown us this year that despite the bads, they can be a good baseball team if they put it all together. And that's my one thought. Can they put it all together before it's too late? Truthfully, I don't think they can fully put it all together this year because the team is just isn't talented enough and healthy enough to put it all together. But I do think they can stay in this race for quite some time in the NL Central. Are they going to win it? I don't know. It's that crazy. <laughs> I mean, the Cincinnati Reds are a first-place baseball team. They're a good team, too. I'm not going to knock them at all anymore. They're a good baseball team. Milwaukee, if they don't blow it up, is going to be there. Chicago could be right there. Pittsburgh, if they put it together, could be right there. And the Cardinals are winning more baseball as of late. Could they creep back in? Sure, because the division is awful. And Pittsburgh has a chance to stay in the race and win it. Question is, is the front office going to do it? Who knows? Historically, no. Because they should have fired Andy Haynes a long time ago. But I'll leave you with this. I'm still going to be here five days a week, no matter what. So make sure you come by tomorrow. We're going to be talking about the Miami Marlins upcoming four game set down there in Miami. Maybe we'll get Peter Pratt on the show on Sunday to recap that series. On That'll be tomorrow's show previewing the series. On Friday, of course, we'll be answering your questions for Mailbag Friday. So make sure you answer or, uh, ask your questions on Twitter at Locked on Pirates or at MVP underscore Ethan. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Have a phenomenal rest of your Wednesday. Enjoy the afternoon game today. Hopefully the Pirates finally win a game again. And I will see you on the flip side.